This video is going to focus on projectiles and in particular ground-to-ground uh, -ground projectiles. It's kind of a classic physics type, type problem where we're going to be studying a, a projectile that is launched from the ground, travels in a parabola, and returns to the ground. So that's what we're going for uh, here. Uh, the type of problem that we're going to be studying uh, is going to look like this. It says, at the start of a football game, the ball is kicked and travels a distance of 50 meters. The receiving team's kick returner has to wait 3.5 seconds for the ball to reach him. We want to know three things. A, what is the maximum height of the ball's path? B, what was the initial velocity of the ball just after it was kicked? And C, what was the final velocity of the ball as the returner caught it? Now, this video is going to kind of consist of three things. We're going to have a little bit of review where we get the terms and the concepts of projectile motion um, and ground-to-ground -ground projectiles uh, reviewed a little bit. Um, then we're going to have a time where we're going to work out the problem and show you the math on how to calculate A, B, and C there. And then we're going to finally obviously give you the final answer. Now if you'd rather skip the review part of this video, you can do so. Uh, you can go forward right to uh, the problem. All you need to do is click right here on your screen where it says skip right to the problem. If you want to go even faster and maybe you want to pause the video and write this problem down and uh, try it on your own and then you want to go right to the answer, you can skip all the way to the end of the video here and we'll show you the answer right there. So um, if you don't want the answer right away and you don't want to skip right to the problem then we're going to do a little review and that's what's coming next. If you'd want to do either of these you can click on them uh, still now and you can uh, skip to that portion of the video. Alright, so here's our uh, review. A couple things that are always true and always important when thinking about projectiles and ground-to-ground -ground, uh, projectiles in particular. One, uh, when the ball is kicked, it's going to have a, a velocity in the y direction and it's going to have a velocity in the x direction. Because it's going on this curved path, we know that there's got to be a vx and there's got to be a vy. Now, the way the VX and VY work are pretty important. The VX, the velocity of the ball as it's going in its curved path, if we only look at the X direction uh, velocity, it's going to be constant. Whatever it began with, that's what it's going to end with. So the VX will not change. The VY, on the other hand, is going to be a constant, but instead of constant velocity, it's going to be constant acceleration. What that means is as it's going in its curved path, if you think only in the y direction, we know on the way up that gravity is definitely going to affect that ball. And it's going to decelerate it, and it's going to slow it down uh, in the y direction all the way up here to where uh, that's going to be uh, zero, actually, uh, as far as the velocity at, at, at its peak for a split second. And then on the way down, it's going to gain all that velocity back, constantly accelerating due to gravity. So those are important. VI is equal to VF. All right, because Vx does not change, and because all of the uh, Vi um, and um, Vf in, I'm sorry, and because of all of the, uh, the Vi that was given in the y direction is given back on the second part of the uh, path, because those two things are true, Vi is going to be equal to Vf. All right, the initial velocity is going to be equal to the final velocity. And a closer look at that will show you uh, these two vector additions that will kind of help us. Vx is here. Viy is here. If you add those two together uh, with vector addition, you're going to get your initial velocity. On the way down, Vf in the y direction is going to be equal to Vi in the y direction because, again, all of the velocity that was lost in the y direction to get to the top of its path was given back as it accelerated down towards the earth in the y direction. So the VFY is going to be equal to the VIY. The VX is staying the same. And therefore, when we add them together, we're going to have a final velocity that looks like this. So the VI and the VF are equal in both magnitude and direction. That's really important. All right, the next thing is uh, the time. All right, the time in the air is a little tricky. There's two ways to look at the time. One, when the ball's kicked, it's going to be in the air a certain amount of time, obviously. Now, in the x direction, because the x direction is using uh, 
this whole path here in the x-direction, uh, the x-direction you will use all of the time. So if it is going to be in the air for 3.5 seconds total, we know that that ball is moving in the x-direction that whole time. So we're going to use the whole amount of time that the problem gives us or that we calculate when we're talking about the x-direction. Now, for the y-direction, it's different because in those 3.5 seconds, the ball is going up and then the ball is going back down. We only use half of the time or t1 half in the y-direction. Because if you think about it, if we use the whole time, the distance in the y direction that we'd be calculating was one trip up and one trip down in that whole 3.5 seconds. And so therefore, uh, we'd be really calculating that distance twice. And so in the y direction, you're only going to use half the time. And we'll see how that plays out in our problems here in a little bit. All right, initial velocity in the y direction. Well, here's what we can do. This is important. We can kind of split this problem in half. In order to give us enough information to solve these problems, what we can do is we can look at this ball as if it's starting from this highest peak here and we can turn it into a problem in which we can calculate and figure out this right side here and then kind of extrapolate it to the whole path. And when we do that, at the peak of the flight of the object, when you're at half of the time in the air, and when you're in half of the distance traveled, this right here, the initial velocity in the y direction is going to be zero. Because what's happening is it's losing all of its velocity in the y direction all the way until it gets to zero. And then it's going to gain it all back. But right here at this point, vi is going to be equal to zero. So when t is one half, or when the distance is one half, uh, we can say that the initial velocity in the y direction is zero. All right, well, um, the only other thing that we want to review are the equations that we might be using here. These are our velocity and acceleration equations that have been uh, adapted a little bit for vectors and for projectiles. You can see that uh, we have g in here instead of a. Uh, that's 9.8 meters per second squared because that's the acceleration due to gravity of projectiles here on Earth. And we can see we have the x direction equation here and then uh, all the y direction equations that we'll be using right here. All right, now it's time to start solving the problem. We have a list of things that we know. Let's pull them right out of the problem and come up with some things to get us started. Uh, the dx, which is the range of the ball, is 50 meters. That came right out of the problem. It said the ball in the x direction traveled 50 meters. The time right out of the problem is 3.5 seconds. Uh, one tip that we'll give you is if they don't give you the time, that's something that you're going to want to find out right away. That's going to really help you. In this case, we uh, caught a break a little bit because it gave us the time beforehand. G, we know that's a constant, 9.8 meters per second squared. And then this one is important also. That's what we just talked about in the review session. But if you missed it, here it is. The VIY, the initial velocity in the Y direction, when time is half, or 1.75 seconds, and distance is half, so halfway through the ball's flight, the VIY is zero. The dy, which is what we're looking for in letter A, is going to be the maximum height. We don't know that yet. The vi, which is what we're looking for in letter B, we don't know yet. And then the vf is also what we're trying to calculate. So first step, we want to find the distance in the y direction. What is this height? With these values here, 50 meter kick in the air for 3.5 seconds, we can figure out the dy. So how are we going to get that done? Well, we know some things, and we know that we can plug them into uh, this equation here. It's the distance in the y direction is equal to viyt plus 1 half gt squared. Filling that in a step further, distance in the y direction is equal to viyt we said that the initial velocity in the y direction, if we look at this part of the ball's path, is going to be zero. So that's going to go away. Then 1 half gt squared, g is 9.8. t, because we're only going to look at the second half of the ball's path, because we want that viy to be zero, that t, we're not going to use the whole time. We're going to use half the time. So here's what it looks like. dy is equal to zero plus 1 half 
times 9.8 times 1.75 squared, which is really T1 half. That's important. All right, taking that down a step further, we can say that the distance in the y direction is 15 meters. 1 half times 9.8 times 1.75 squared. So letter A is done. All right, here's what we're going to do for letter B and C. Remember what we said. We said that VI was going to be equal to VF. In a projectile ground-to-ground -ground problem, VI equals VF. So we're going to skip over B and go right to C because VF, the final velocity here, is a bit easier to calculate because we can take this right half of the problem and use that uh, VIY as zero, and that will help us as we uh, start to calculate this. So we're going to do VF first. That's easier, and then we'll be able to work backwards uh, to assume that VF is equal to VI. So how are we going to find VF? Well, VF is really going to be, as we said before, the combination between uh, VFY and VX. So the velocity here, it doesn't have just an X velocity. It doesn't have just a Y velocity. It's a combination of both. So the VX is going to be here. The VY is going to be here, the final uh, velocity in the Y direction. And then when we add those two together, the resultant is going to be the final velocity. Well, how do we do that? VX we can find pretty easily. VX looks like this. VX is DX over T. 50 divided by 3.5 is going to give you 14.3 meters per second. Now, why do we use 3.5 and not 1.75? That's a great question. The reason is, in the x direction, we're having this whole distance, all 50 meters. And since we have all 50 meters, we're going to use the whole time that's given, which is 3.5. It's going to be a little different in the y direction. In the y direction, we want to find VFY. How are we going to find VFY? Well, we have um, a couple of different things. One, if we use only half of the time, as we said before, that 1.75, then we can assume that the VIY is going to be zero. And with those two things, along with 9.8, we can use this equation. VFY equals VIY plus GT. VFY equals zero because VIY is zero at this point of the path. And then plus 9.8 times 1.75. That's easy math. VFY equals 17.15 meters per second. So in the y direction, right here at this point, it's going to be just over 17 meters per second. All right, we're almost done. Let's fill in these two uh, vectors, and uh, we'll add them together. So this is what it would look like. Uh, VFY is 17.15. VX is 14.3. Uh, we need two things. We need a magnitude for that hypotenuse to give us our final velocity, and we need a direction. So we'll find that angle right there. The magnitude is just using... So, I'm sorry, not Sokoto, but Pythagorean Theorem. Uh, this is just skipping one step, so we're going to take the square root of 17.15 squared plus 14.3 squared. We get 22.3 meters per second. That's the magnitude of the final velocity. And then, using Sokoto, tangent of the angle is equal to 17.15 over 14.3. That's equal to the inverse tangent of 17.15 over 14.3. That gives me an angle of 50 degrees. So we have our final velocity, 22.3 meters per second at an angle of 50 degrees. And once we have that final velocity, remember, we also have the initial velocity because in a ground-to-ground -ground projectile problem, the VI is going to be equal to VF. So both of those are now calculated. All right, here's our final answers. Projectiles, ground-to-ground, um, -ground, uh, final answer. Here we go, letter A. What was the maximum height of the ball's path? We calculate that as 15 meters. Letter B and letter C were both the same answer. The initial velocity and the final velocity are equal in these problems. And so the VI and the VF are both 22.3 meters per second at 50 degrees.